Hi, Tommy Clayton here, an Open Syed middle school teacher and lesson writer. Excited to share lesson one from unit 8.1, which is our contact forces unit. Uh, this is a, a lesson I look forward to every year because you get to really hear some cool stories from your students. Um, and every year I'm always amazed at the things I hear students say. Um, and it's a great lesson if you're starting the school year with uh, this unit to like really get to know some interesting things about your students. So let's dig in. So uh, we're going to talk about this lesson at a glance and see what the main focus of this lesson is. And this lesson is an anchoring phenomena lesson. So this is where we kick off the unit. Um, it's going to take us about three days to do so. Uh, it'll take you about 25 minutes to set up um, some materials for the lesson. There is uh, really no hands-on investigation in this um, lesson. Uh, students are not required to have devices, and there are no uh, additional related videos for this lesson. All right, so let's take a look at what happens in this lesson on day one. So uh, we're going to set the stage for the phenomena. Uh, we're going to share a little bit of a story about a cell phone breaking. Um, and then we are going to brainstorm some related phenomena together about times we saw cell phones or a device break. Um, and then we're going to share and compare some related phenomena in terms of other stories and things like that. We're going to set up our notebooks, think about some collision factors, and we're going to uh, develop our first initial model trying to explain what might be happening in a collision that could cause damage or maybe no damage. On day two, we're going to get into our scientist circle. Uh, we're going to spend some time doing some uh, work around our norms. And then as a class, we're going to develop our uh, initial consensus model um, and uh, see what kind of related questions are starting to emerge. And we're going to return back to these uh, list of factors that we've been generating throughout. And then on day three, uh, we're going to revisit those factors, kind of really make sure that we've got all the ones we think might be involved. Uh, that'll lead us to set up our question board and come up with some ideas for investigations. And then we'll have some navigation uh, and then finally some reflection on our norms um, and uh, just adding to our, our table of context for our, our notebook. Okay, so over the course of the three days, um, we figure out some stuff, and really none of that is going to be definitive, and that's okay. We kind of really figure out that, like, there's a lot of stuff we don't know. So in that first day, we definitely uh, are pretty solid on, like, what it means uh, when we say collision. That means things are going to come in contact, uh, something's usually moving, and sometimes there's damage, sometimes there's not. And uh, there's different factors that we think are, are uh, involved in this and may have something to do with the fact that sometimes things are damaged and other times they're not. Um, on day two and three, we really realize like w there's a lot we don't know. We aren't sure what's like really happening to cause the damage. We aren't so sure what changes might be happening um, to objects when they collide. And so uh, on day three, we really figure out like we got a lot of questions. And we have some really great ideas on how to answer these questions. So let's take a look at some key moments in this lesson. So um, part one is where we set the stage for the new phenomena. So where we introduce this idea of a cell phone breaking. Here's where you get to tell a little bit of a story of a time maybe it happened to you or maybe a family member. Um, might be fun to have a prop, um, you know, hold up a, a, a broken cell phone if you have an old one. You can always change the background on your phone, make it look like broken, you know, kind of just like make this come alive a little bit. Um, and, and in this moment, we're going to ask kids to tell stories. Pretty much every kid has probably experienced uh, a device breaking or seen or heard someone uh, break a device. So they're going to share these stories um, of a time like an iPad or a cell phone or, you know, some type of like device broke. The goal here is to get out that there are three different types of collisions. One where the object that we consider fragile, like the phone, is moving and hits something stationary. One where the object, like the phone, was not moving and something else hit it. And then sometimes there's this crazy other collision where the phone was moving and something else moving hit it. Not always uh, clear in the stories. These don't always come up with students. Um, but we're going to try to get all three of these to emerge to start this poster of the different kinds of collisions. When the kids are telling stories, we're going to give them CD cases to reenact the story. So the CD case will like be the phone. 
um, and and like try to encourage the kids to put a little, you know, excitement, a little drama into the story. Um, and it's okay if the CD cases break. What we do want to make sure of, though, is that students are wearing goggles and students are far enough away from other students. And if they can't be because of the confines of your classroom, make sure that those the students around them are wearing goggles. CD cases can shatter and go everywhere, which is cool. And it's kind of part of what we want. We want to get kids thinking about like things breaking and damage and all that. And it's also OK if it doesn't break, because that's sort of interesting, too. So in part three, we're going to broaden out to thinking about other stories, right? So like we've got stories about uh, cell phones or devices breaking, but like what else? Where else have we seen things that maybe broke because of a collision or maybe they didn't and we were like surprised? So um, we're going to share these stories. Uh, we're going to write them on a note card. Green note cards are going to be for times where there was a collision and we were surprised that there was no damage. And then these red or pink note cards, these are going to be the times when there was damage, something actually broke. And so uh, we're going to have the kids organize these. Their collisions are going to think about like, was it a collision type A where, you know, the fragile object was moving? Was it B where the fragile object was not? Or is it C where like both objects were moving? They're going to go to uh, corners of the room. So one corner of the room will be A, one will be B, one will be C. And they're going to share stories there with uh, the other kids at that uh, particular station. And the goal here is to draw out different factors. Like, oh, I kind of noticed that like when things were, you know, moving fast or things were heavy, like that had something to do with it. We're trying to get the kids to start talking about the type of factors that might be involved in particular collisions. So uh, after we, we do that, we uh, work together, uh, I'm sorry, we develop an initial model. So um, we are uh, trying to explain like what might be happening that could cause the damage. And we're thinking about these different moments in the collision. And so after we do that individually, we want to come together and uh, come up with a consensus model. And so this is the first time we're going to form our scientist circle in this unit. And we're going to do some work here around our uh, shared norms. So we're going to um, set these together as a class. Uh, this is the first unit of the year for you. And uh, we're going to really uh, make sure that we own these. This is really, really important for uh, shared sense making. It's the way we create a really good culture in our classroom to figure things out. And this is really a crucial step that you don't want to skip. Um, we are going to go back to these often in this unit and check in on our, our norms. Um, and there's lots of places that uh, are in the actual lessons where we reflect on a particular norm or where we think about how we're doing like as a class. So we get into our scientist circle and we come up with this uh, consensus model. Um, and what we realize is we're really unsure of what might be happening. We have some areas of agreement, like where we think that maybe, you know, there's definitely something breaking or fracturing or pushing, right? And, you know, we're puzzled over like what this word damage and breaking means. And that's all OK. Um, what your role here is, is to just get out that sort of uncertainty, um, highlight those areas with question marks on the model um, and uh, highlight areas where we agree with maybe exclamation points. You can use whatever symbols make sense for you and your class. You'll notice in this sample model, uh, in the no damage uh, time point two, we have a question mark because we like just really don't know. And we kind of all agreed that like we don't know. It's OK if your model doesn't look like this, right? Whatever the class wants to do to represent that, that's the goal. Get their ideas out. And from class to class, your models are likely going to look different. You might hear kids bring up energy. You might not. And that's OK. You don't need to force it here. Um, if you noticed a kid or a student had the word energy on their model, you might invite them to share that, get it out, get it on the board. But if not, that's OK. Right here is where we're just trying to get out ideas about like what might be happening in terms of what we can see and what we can't see. So some of those words like energy and force are probably going to come out and you don't necessarily need to push for them if they don't. So uh, after we develop our consensus model, um, on uh, we, we kind of return back to some of the factors. We think about some of the questions that we have. Um, and then we come together to form our driving question board in part two. So here's where we're going to write an individual question. And we're going to try to really focus students on asking questions about 
what happens during a collision or like the factors. We're going to try to move them away from some of like the material science. Um, it's okay if we have questions about materials, but um, we really want to get them asking about uh, the factors that could affect if something breaks or not. Like what does speed have to do with it or, or mass, right? Those type of things. Um, here's where you can remind them of the notice and wonder as well as our initial model, all those question marks. Those are places that can help students to generate those questions. Then we develop our ideas for investigations. Students uh, are likely going to have great suggestions for how we could figure out if things break or if they don't. Likely that's going to include like breaking some stuff and some ideas. Try to push them a little bit here to be specific. Like how will they do this? What type of things do they want to use, right? Um, those type of things uh, will really help later on as we navigate into future lessons. Um, and try to motivate them to want to test factors. Try to get them to think about like, well, how could we find out if mass matters? What could we do? Look for them to suggest like, well, we need to try a couple of different objects with different masses, maybe colliding them together, or maybe we need to try things at different speeds. Try to draw out some of that um, and get it on your ideas for investigations board. So where do we go from here? Lesson two, we actually break stuff. That's what we want to do, and we do. We break some stuff in lesson two. We find out that breaking stuff is challenging. Um, and so we, uh, we are motivated to use these carts and tracks so we can study collisions uh, a little easier. And we investigate more about what's happening with uh, shape and motion. So here's some tips and tricks for this lesson. Um, you're going to want to have goggles and extra CD cases ready for that story time early in the beginning. The story time can get long. This was a mistake I made the first time I did it. Kids have lots to say. Uh, I really want to use a timer. We don't want to cut them off as much as we can, but we do want to move on. We could spend all day sharing stories of collisions and times that things broke. So um, be cognizant of, of that time of the lesson. Um, in lesson two, we are going to break stuff. And in lesson three and four, we're going to test lots of different materials. So uh, knowing that, that can help you with your ideas for investigations um, and uh, thinking about some of the questions you might want to get up on the board. Uh, that'll help with some of your coherence and your navigation, kind of knowing where you're going. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty on the models, and that's okay. Lean into that. Remind the kids that that's okay, right? Like, whatever you think is going on here, and if you don't know, that's totally okay. Um, but, like, put something on the paper, right? Try to think about what might be happening, and it's okay that we don't know what's happening, right? That's our goal. We're going to figure it out, and it's going to help us to ask good questions um, about those areas that we don't know. And it's totally okay at this point as a class if we really have no idea what might be happening in a collision in terms of what we can and can't see. Uh, you are going to have a word that we introduce in this lesson, and that is collisions. Uh, we're going to introduce that during part one when we add uh, a title to that poster where we name the different types of collisions. We're going to formally define this word as when a, a moving object hits or runs into another object. We have lots of great posters in this lesson, um, and all of these you're going to refer back to at future points. So uh, these you're going to want to have handy, or if you can do digital versions, that's great. But you're going to have uh, our factors poster, our related phenomena, which is all our collision stories, our initial model, which we return to, our driving question board, and our ideas for investigation. So make sure you hang on to those. All right, and that's going to do it for lesson one. Um, I really hope you enjoy all of the great stories that kids have. Um, I think you're going to find this a very exciting lesson, and the kids uh, really share some interesting stories. Uh, you're going to get to know your kids and, and, and some of the, the, the great things that they do outside of the classroom. Uh, come back and join us for lesson two. Uh, we'll hear all about how we get to smash and break all sorts of things in your classroom. Thanks, and have a great day.